Hello and welcome to my lecture on advanced SQL. So we've done um, a very simple uh, solution to error checking so far. Um, part of the reason is that when we're doing like a query, uh, the kind of errors that we tend to get are generally sort of big and obvious errors. There are two categories, like if you'd have a bad database connection, none of your queries is going to work and usually the first page you hit is just going to blow up horribly. Um, if you're on a page and you put bad SQL, like bad syntax, you know, an extra comma or something like that, you're, it's, it's, you're going to catch that mostly during development. So you, you don't, because we're not concatenating strings together, um, you know, user data doesn't affect the syntax, gives cause syntax errors on queries. Um, if you have like a missing table or a missing column, that can cause a query to blow up. Uh, if you think you have a column name, name and there's no column name name, then you're going to blow up. Um, but again, that's a big problem and usually easy to see. Uh, maybe a, uh, if you have like four parameters in your query and you don't have four corresponding array entries, um, that's, that's going to be a big problem. And you, you catch a lot of those uh, during development. Sometimes a violation of a constraint um, like uh, maybe a foreign key constraint, that, that might be a little harder to catch. But in general, we have been doing very, very simple error checking. And if we go all the way back to who four or five lectures ago, uh, we put this thing in the pdo.php, and you probably haven't even thought about it since then. But basically, what we really did is as soon as we make the connection with the password, we immediately set error mode, because PDO supports more than one error mode. So we immediately set the error mode to be error mode exception, which means anything goes wrong with a prepare statement or an execute or anything like that, just blow up, just totally blow up, don't continue, just blow up with an error message. And so if you look at this, and here's, here's like an example. Now this example would be something that you, you can never execute this successfully where I put colon XYZ in the, uh, the prepare statement and then I use colon pizza in the array. This is these, you know, it's supposed to be the same, and it's not. And so the, uh, <clears throat> the which one's blowing up here? The stack trace error to execute. Execute's what's blowing up here. So the execute's blowing up. Yeah, because that's the only time it knows there's an error is when the execute's blowing up, and um, and it just dies. That's a trace back. It's ugly. It gives us enough information, um, and most of the time. Up to now, you really have been doing development, and sort of once it works, it works, and you don't worry too much about it. But as we move more towards production environments, we have to start thinking a little more in a little more sophisticated ways about uh, errors. Um, trace packs are great to tell developers what are going on, and if, if you got a bad SQL syntax, you might as well just stop. But if there is a mistake, we want a really good error log, right? We want to log errors because users aren't going to like, you're, you know, you're you're making you know Airbnb and no user is going to take a screenshot and send a tech support to trace back. You can't afford that. You might want to put up like a fail whale page or something and say, oh, something went wrong. We're working on it, and then put a log entry in that gets exactly what's going on with the SQL and everything that's wrong. So, um, and so we can't. You know, we're not the user when we're not doing development. You know, it's running in production. So the other thing is, there are some times that there are uh, rare errors where, let's just say you said this, this field's supposed to be 100 characters and, you know, it's an email address. And every once in a while, you run across someone who has a 120-character email address. And so it's working 99.9% .9 of the time and, you know, 0.1% of the time it blows up. And you want to catch that in the logs as well. And so this might be a thing where you're like, oh, I better put in an if statement uh, to check the length of that field before I throw it to the database and cause something. And if you get real sophisticated, there is a technique called fuzz testing. And what fuzz testing is, among other things, is it looks at all the post data that your application is willing to accept, all the post variables, and then it just sends the nastiest, nastiest kind of stuff to those post things, and it just kind of overwhelms you with evil post data. Uh, sometimes it's got HTML, sometimes it's got SQL injection, and, you know, it just sits there and just hammers your PostScript, hammers the post code within your PHP with as nasty a stuff that it can. And, um, and so, so sometimes you haven't thought through as carefully enough, uh, 
And if you're in production, somebody might be attacking you and sending really nasty post data that maybe some of your clever error checking isn't catching and it makes it through your SQL and it starts blowing up. And you'd want to know when that was happening. So um, this is a, a pretty common pattern that we've been using. We call the PDO prepare. And then we've called, uh, we get the statement back and then we execute it, right? And we put the little little codes in there and then we have your little maps, all that stuff. We've been, we've been doing this all along. Um, and there's no error checking, right? So there's like, uh, what happened? What might happen here? And what might happen here? Is this execute going to blow up? Is this prepare going to blow up? Should we put if statements there to check to see the return values and then put out logs or something like that? So we could put quite a bit of stuff here, um, you know, put a whole bunch of stuff there that would be a lot more responsible in terms of running our code in production. Okay, so if you take a look at the prepare document, uh, the prepare documentation and the execute documentation, well, it depends. Uh, prepare will either emit an exception or return false, um, or and the execute returns true or false. So we should be checking those results. We have configured our PDO to to send exceptions, and we can we could reconfigure it differently. But then you'd have to check a bunch of return errors. And what happens is when you would get false back, then you would have to look into this variable called error info. And error info is an array. And it gives this lumber like 4200 in a string, 42000 in a string, a driver specific error code and driver specific message. And that's a lot of stuff to look at. And so if you get false, if you turned um, exception off and said return me a false, then you have to look in this and dig that stuff out. And, and, and that would be something you could log uh, the stuff again in production. You probably wouldn't um, print the. Uh, you probably wouldn't print the. Uh, you wouldn't print the error message out to the user. You'd print some kind of like, oh, something bad has happened, and away you go. Okay, so if you look at some of the other code, the more sophisticated code that I've written, for example, and take a look at the attendance tool, I use a slightly different pattern. Um, when I am doing code in the attendant in most of the tools of Tsugi. And I've got this code and you can take a look in this, you know, that file. And this is sort of a, an abbreviated version of it. And what I've done is I've created a, uh, this PDOX, which is an extension of PDO. Um, if you look at the code, it's an object or anything and it extends PDO. And it adds a few more methods, which is really cool. So I have this thing called query die. And query die says, um, and, and, and so if you look at most of the time you do a prepare and then you do an execute. Well, query die combine, first combines the prepare and the execute and basically says, do extensive error checking. And if anything goes wrong, log everything. Log everything that you can possibly log and, uh, and then, you know, and then stop and die with a message. And so this is, um, this is sort of a, subset of the code. So it takes the query die takes a, an SQL as a parameter, it takes the array as a second parameter, and a true false whether or not to do an error log. And there's actually a whole bunch of things that return errors that don't die. And there's a whole series of these things and you can go look at the documentation of, of PDOX to figure out what's going on. But if we trace the code through, it's doing a more responsible job of handling uh, the try and accept, right? So it wraps it all in a try and accept, try catch, and it does a prepare. And that prepare might throw an exception, which means it comes down and then you get an error message, right? Um, or it, <coughs> you may actually have a, a array might be false in the case of, of like a delete. Well, if the, if the SQL was complete, you don't need array. Uh, so the execute may or may not have a parameter. And then success now is a return of true or false. And, um, and then it, if there's a problem, it does an error log and gets the message from the exception, and then it dies. This part comes out, the, in, the it, it could be more elegant than this, but it does a die internal database error. And so what happens is, is I do this in my main code, and again, there's, there's a lot more sophisticated stuff that's going on here. This is giving you just an outline of the kind of things that it does. But I've combined the prepare and execute with a bunch of error checking in between, and uh, so then in my main code, I just do this, and I basically say, look, most of the time, this is going to work. And if it doesn't work, that's an anomaly, a bad anomaly. So log everything and die. 
and well die, which means put a message out to the user interface and then stop executing. Okay. And so again, you can look at that code. If you're going to do your own application, you might borrow this code because this little query guy, this PDOX is not really specific to Tsugi. You can, um, you can use it for all kinds of things or a similar pattern. And so, so we have this code that I've been using in the simpler things where I'm really showing you how PDO works, PDO prepare and then statement execute, or I need to do some error checking, but then I change this so that instead I, I wrap that up to one big call where I do PDO query die and I've got both the SQL and the array as parameters and that magically does a lot of error checking for me and because I said die the only way it comes back is if this part is good if, if it actually worked right and so you know it worked or it died and so it's doing reasonable error checking and, and again I emphasize the die is okay because the kind of errors, the most common error you get is like a syntax error, like you make that a dash instead of an underscore, and that's a bad column name. Or you, you know, you forget the end there. That's a bad parameter. But that's really structural, and hopefully you catch that at most of those in development. So dying with a nice error message to this user and a nice log error to the log is a completely reasonable thing to do at this point. So that's a lot better error checking. Okay?